Good morning everybody. Welcome to a silly Saturday with me. My name is Tess Crawley. I'm a clinical and forensic psychologist and I'm the director of Dr. Tess Crawley and Associates Psychology Practice. We're based in Hobart. We've got an office in Launceston in Tasmania and we do a lot of rural outreach around Tassie. Not always looking like this, I can tell you. Uh, and of course we do provide online services um, throughout Australia and beyond if you're interested. Um, I'm just very quickly sharing into our Facebook group because I want to tell you a funny story but I'm just sharing now into our Stigma Rebellion group so bear with me while I do that. If you're new to my page and you want to know what the Stigma Rebellion is, it's um, at the moment it's like a, an identical version of this page in terms of content but it allows you to comment and interact a little bit more privately because it is a closed Facebook group and by closed, I wish I had a different term because it sort of ex it sounds like it's exclusive and that you can't get in but it just means that um, it's a closed community once you're in there. So all you need to do is ask to join and I will welcome you in with open arms and um, and then you can um, interact ask questions post questions onto the page um, all sorts of things so it's actually a really good um, group to be a part of if you're wanting to interact a bit more privately without all your Facebook friends knowing what you're up to um, Today I wanted to share with you the power and freedom of not overthinking things because sometimes I think um, people do tend to worry a little bit, anticipatory anxiety, things that are coming up that they're really you know, wanting to do but then they start getting a bit anxious about what if it doesn't work. So a couple of reasons this has come to mind. Um, I'm going to be teaching some of my team members how to do these Facebook vlogs. Hi Cara, speaking of team members, welcome aboard. Um, yes, I'm going to be teaching some of my team members how to do vlogs, which is a video blog, so that over time in the future you might see some of my other team members popping up on the page telling you about topics that are of interest to them. And a lot of them are really... Um, nervous some of them are really excited which I'm, I'm excited by and some of them are really nervous about what if I can't do it how will I know what to say uh, what if I fluff my words and all that sort of stuff so not overthinking I don't plan the content of these vlogs I think right when can I do it today what time have I got up my sleeve to spend talking to you guys and how will I that's my main concern is when will I do it then I start saying hmm, I wonder what I might talk about sometimes an idea pops into my head and I think oh that's a great vlog topic and I'll talk about that so today not overthinking you know this is me flying off the seat of my pants flying by the seat of my pants not off the seat of my pants um, today hi Brooklyn welcome I'm glad you're here with us today too um, when you overthink you tend to you tend to get yourself a little bit churned up and the product of whatever it is you're trying to achieve can be affected by that so you might think of um, news readers or morning TV show presenters and how relaxed they look they've got an obviously they've got a plan of what the what the show is going to look like but then they often ad lib what the, what words actually come out of their mouths you can see that they're unscripted and so people often say to me that these videos seem really natural and and approachable because they're unscripted, I have in my hand, I've got my iPad so that I can share into the other groups. But other than that, um, really, I'm making it up as I go along. I know what I'm talking about, but I'm not writing it down ahead of time. If I tried to do that, I would then be nervous about missing my place on the bit of paper that I've written in front of me, or I'd be... Um, um, you'd, you'd notice that I was looking and reading or, or reading from here and trying to keep my eye contact with you and it wouldn't seem as natural and as comfortable. Now that's me with the vlogging. That's not the funny story. I'll tell you the funny story in a minute. But what popped into my mind this week, um, this past week I was talking with a client who was a bit, um, who was talking about getting out of the house with a baby and how sometimes it's a really big challenge. And I remember when I had my two, um, when my two kids were a bit smaller than they are now, when my second child was born, um, I was still going to my mother's group meetings every Friday morning, which I valued dearly. And I realised, of course, that having two kids 
it was a lot harder to sort of herd these cats out of the house, um, even when they were still little, little. Um, getting organised, all the things you have to carry, all that sort of stuff. And sometimes it's tempting to just go, it's all too hard, I'm not going. And I found what I ended up doing was I ended up not thinking about it. So I just took my glasses off and some petals fell off my head. This is another um, filter, by the way. They're not real flowers, in case you didn't know. So I didn't think about it. I would just pick the baby up, pick the toddler up, get the bag, go. And if I'd forgotten something, I'd deal with it then. Otherwise, I never would have left the house. It just would have been too overwhelming. And I think that's the trick. When we overthink things, um, even small things like going to a mother's group catch up where we were all going to sit around, have coffee and support one another. It was nothing difficult. It was something very pleasurable that I was looking forward to doing. But the act of getting out of the house with two little ones, if I overthought that, then, oh, hi, Chris, welcome and good morning. And oh, my goodness, I've almost got a party happening here this morning. So if I overthought the act of getting out of the house with two little kids, I never would have left and I would have missed out on that wonderful, that support that I got from my mother's group back in those days when my kids were really, really little and I really needed that social interaction, that adult conversation and that emotional support. So it would have been a real shame to let overthinking the process of getting out of the house stop me from getting that support and that interaction. Angela's saying, hi gorgeous, she's trying to throw me off the scent a little bit here. Um, now, um, the other thing that I find um, people tend to trip themselves up with is when there's something that they want to do, something they want to change. I've talked before about procrastination. So with me, with my writing, for example, that was a big project that I've been wanting to do for years and years and years and procrastinating and thinking, well, I'll, I'll read about writing. That's almost the same as writing. No, it's not. I'd, I'll, I'll research writing courses that I can do. That's almost the same as writing my book. No, it's not. It's procrastinating. And some of the information that I sourced during those activities is still helpful, but I also need to write. To get the writing done, I need to write. So not overthinking things, not over-preparing things can sometimes free you up a little bit. If I say to myself, I only need to find 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. So I'm getting up a little bit earlier every morning. I'm spending between 10 and 20 minutes writing. That's not a lot of time. I'm now in the habit of doing that without overthinking it. If I find another block of 10 or 20 minutes, I do another bit of writing. So I'm not agonizing, and these petals are funny, aren't they? I'm not agonizing about how am I going to write this book. I'm just saying 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. That's all I need to do. Another one's exercise. So if you're wanting to get a little bit fitter and you're wanting to get out of the house and you're wanting to say you're wanting to start running and you've never run in your life before, the idea of running, well, okay, do I need what shoes do I need to have? What clothes do I need to wear? Am I fit enough? Do I need to go and get myself checked out with the doctor? Can you see how that all those questions start building, 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 and it all gets a bit too hard? Um, I remember when Magda Zhabansky was um, um, talking for um, she went through the weight. Weight Watchers, I think it was Weight Watchers program. and But I remember um, her talking about exercising and she said something which made so much sense to me. She said that she convinced herself that all she had to do was one, put on her shoes, any comfortable shoes, and that she only had to go for a five minute walk. And what she found that was just getting out the door and going for her five minute walk, before she knew it, she was enjoying herself and she'd actually gone for 10 minutes. And then before she knew it, she'd gone for 15 minutes and then it would gradually build up from there. So again, not overthinking the complexities of becoming um, you know, a runner. Think instead of getting out, out the, get out of the house. Get your running shoes on and get out of the house. Let the rest of it take care of itself. Now, of course, sometimes when you um, don't plan things, when you do um, be a bit spontaneous and fly by the seat of your pants a little bit, things can go awry. So again, using my writing as an example, I've learnt a new phrase this week, which is, am I a plotter or a pantser? Turns out I'm a pantser, which is a writer who doesn't have an overly drawn out plan for what they're writing. They write and they let the story unfold. And that's how I'm writing the book that I'm writing. And every now and then I have characters say and do things, which takes me by complete surprise, which is a lot of fun. Hi, Ali, you're here too today. This is a lovely little gathering this fine Saturday morning. Um, and what... Um, 
can go wrong. So the pros and cons of um, being a pantser as a writer is that you can get writers, you're more vulnerable to writer's block and then you might be at greater risk of abandoning the project. So at the moment, while I'm learning to have a routine around writing, it suits me very well to be a pantser, to fly by the seat of my pants and not overthink the writing process because I know that I've already fallen victim to procrastination before. If I distract myself with overly plotting a plan, I know that the, tr the trap for me is that that won't result in actual writing. So at the moment it's about writing for 10 minutes a day. For you it might be about putting your shoes on and getting out the door for 5 minutes a day. Whatever it is, not overthinking the end result and launching yourself into action. So the funny story about spontaneity and uh, flying by the seat of one's pants. Uh, a number of years ago I went to a conference and I... Um, decided while I was in Sydney, this was in Sydney a number of years ago, and while I was there I thought I'd catch up with a, a member of my family who at the time was living in Sydney and um, arranged to stay at a, um, what do you call it, a, um, oh gosh I can't remember the word, not a boarding house but you know what I mean, um, a, a, anyway, like, a, not, oh what do they call those places, not a B&B, &B, not an Airbnb, um, where you all you know, take your sleeping bag and um, sleep in dormitories and stuff like that. I can't remember the word. Hi Lee, can you remember the word? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, one of those really, really cheap places that you just take your sleeping bag and sleep wherever you end up. And um, I'd never stayed in one of those places before. The word will come to me. Um, and it was a brand new experience and there were, I think, six of us. I was still a student at the time. Backpackers! Ali, thank you! <laughs> Yes, a backpackers. Right, we got there. Okay, and a hello to Donna. Donna, a hostel. Donna, that's another word. Thank you. We're all throwing them in now. We've got it. Lee's got it. Backpackers. Thank you all. It's backpackers. Yes, backpackers in Sydney. And um, so there are about five or six of us in there. I thought, oh, this is really nice. I went out, had dinner with my sister-in-law, had a lovely, lovely time, got back, hadn't unpacked anything, had just thrown all my bags onto my bed, which was the top bunk, got back. And there were like five women snoring in the room and I hadn't unpacked a single thing out of my backpack and I couldn't see a thing because it was pitch black in there. So I ended up sleeping in my clothes. I couldn't sleep because there was a lot of snoring. Uh, the women had all been bushwalking so there was a rather interesting smell in the room which was great. And, um, and I woke up probably before dawn. I was so desperate to get out of that place. I just grabbed the closest things I could find in the top of my bag and managed to get all myself and my belongings off that top bunk and out the room before anyone else woke up. Breathed a great big sigh of relief, great big lung full of fresh air, went and got some beautiful coffee at a cafe, went to the rest of my conference, had a fabulous day, learnt an awful lot, networked, met some interesting people, um, headed off to the airport and realised I had my whole outfit on inside out and I'd been like that all day long. So the sky didn't falling, nothing bad happened, my reputation didn't die a painful death but it makes for a funny story. It's okay to be spontaneous and have things not quite work out. It's okay to grab your babies and go to a mother's group and realise you've forgotten some nappies. You know, things work out. Things find, you find a solution on the, by the seat of your pants just as much as getting out the door by the seat of your pants can work for you sometimes. Now, on a professional level, on a professional level, this principle can apply too. So often when I have uh, new interns in the practice, so students uh, who are postgraduate level clinical psychology students and they've, 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 their brains are full of their new knowledge from uni, they've had a good couple of years of extra tr postgraduate training and some experience in other placements and they've been exposed to different client types and different supervisors and then they come into the practice with me and I see very much my role as a supervisor in um, private practice with interns as helping them make the transition from student into professional because usually they come to me just before they're fully registered as a psychologist so they need to start to sort of develop their own style of treating clients they need to develop their own um, sense of autonomy and independence. So I, I'm i not a micromanager. Um, I, I encourage the clinicians and the interns to take responsibility for their own, their own learning, but I'll support them as much as I can, but I don't, um, 
I don't spoon feed, that's what I'm trying to say. And so when they come to their supervision sessions with me, they learn very quickly that I don't have a plan for those supervision sessions, that I'm very open to whatever they want to talk about in the rooms and, what, and, and whatever I can um, bring to those conversations to help them problem solve or um, come up with another solution or whatever it might be, an idea for some training they might like to do and so on and so on. So my supervision sessions are very... Um, spontaneous in nature as well. Now that's one school of doing supervision and others, other supervisors will have a very formulaic approach just as other clinicians will have a very formulaic approach. But what I often say to clinicians in my practice who've come fresh from uni is that um, you have to learn the rules to know exactly how you can then fit your personal style within it. So I do encourage all my clinicians are wonderful clinicians, they've all had the wonderful training that they've had and then they lay on top of that at their own personal style so that their personality can show through because a big part of therapy is having a positive relationship between the therapist and the client otherwise the therapy can be a cookie cutter approach from one therapist to the next to the next to the next and it's like well how do I find someone that I can actually get along with and trust enough to open up and tell my stories to so I encourage my clinicians to be open you can prepare so much for a session ahead of time, but you've got to be open for that spontaneity that's required when a client walks in the door and you don't know what they're going to say to what they're going to say to you. You've got to be open to that. Now I know that there is a school of thought that says no therapy sessions must be very structured and very by the book, and um, I say fooey. They don't need to be by the book at all. Uh, I think it's important to learn the book and to know the book and to keep your knowledge up to date and your skills up to date um, and not forget about the book. But you're not going to sit there and treat each client like they're coming, like you're in a sausage factory because that's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for the client. It's not going to work for anybody. Anyway, so don't be afraid to be silly. Don't be afraid to be spontaneous. Certainly don't. Don't overthink things, the things that you want to do with your life. It might be that you've decided to take the kids up to the mountain. Mount Nelson, uh, Mount Nelson, Mount Wellington's got snow on it again this morning, apparently. You might decide, right, we're going to bundle everyone in, we're going to go and build a snowman. And it might be you've got a mountain of washing to do. And it might be that you need to get the groceries. And it might be this and that and the other and the other. And by the time you've overthought all of those drudgery things, the moment's gone and you've missed the opportunity to go up the mountain and have some fun. So stop overthinking. Stop letting procrastination rule your life. Stop letting serious grown up but what abouts get in the way. Just let things happen. If you want to go to a mother's group meeting with your baby and you're finding that you're overthinking the process of getting out the door, stop it. Catch yourself. Notice what's going on up here. Catch yourself and just say, stop it. Tell yourself, stop that. I'm just going. And if I've forgotten the nappies or I've forgotten whatever it might be, my purse or my phone or whatever it else, so be it. The sky won't fall in. That's it for today lecture over. Anyway, I'll leave you with the image of me wandering around Sydney quite confidently with my clothes on inside out and I wish you all a very silly Saturday. Hope you have a fabulous day and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Take care for today. Bye bye.